Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Riley, and I'm back here today with Reed Moon at Moon's Rare Books. And I'm just going to talk a little bit today about the Danish Book of Mormon. So Reed, what's the story behind the translation of the Book of Mormon into Danish? Well, Danish has the designation of being the first uh, Book of Mormon translated into a foreign language. And yeah. so a lot of people don't know that. They would have uh, thought that it would have been Spanish yeah, or one of the other. Yeah, you would have thought other. something else. Yeah, yeah. But it was Danish. And um, this all goes back to when Erastus Snow and a man named Peter O. Hansen were called to pretty much open the Scandinavian mission. Okay. But to understand what's going on, we need to know, who was this Peter O. Hansen? Yeah, yeah, I've never heard of him. Okay, well, he uh, was born in 1818, to kind of give you an idea, and he was 25 years old when he immigrated to America, and he was living in Boston. He's in Boston, he meets the elders, and he joins the church oh, okay. in 1844. Yeah. And by 1845, he makes his way to Nauvoo. Mm -hmm. Helps with building the Nauvoo Temple. Mm -hmm. But on the side, being from Denmark, he wants the Book of Mormon in Danish. And so yeah, on his course. own, without being asked, begins a translation. Oh, and he spent five months translating the Book of Mormon into Danish. That's great. Well, then things get kind of rough in Nauvoo, and the saints are forced out in 1846. Yes, yes, and by 1847, he's pretty early in arriving here in Utah, September 1847. Oh, okay, yeah. So a few months after, two years later, he's called on this mission to um, the Scandinavian mission, and so he goes with Erastus Snow. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. go over to uh, Denmark, they're in Copenhagen, and they have this rough draft manuscript of a translation. That's great. And uh, Erastus Snow meets a Baptist minister. The Baptist minister was um, somewhat fluent in English, and he says, we have this translation, and we just want to know what you think, being a local, That's if amazing. we publish this. Yeah. And so the Baptist minister goes through it and says, this is horrible. <laughs> and he said, it's just, it, it, his words were, it's very imperfect. Okay, yeah. And so um, they had had some success. They had baptized actually a young woman, a Miss Mathiasen. And she was uh, a teacher of German, French, and English. Oh, wow, wow. And she was a native speaker. And yeah. so she began the translation. Erastus Snow asked her to begin oh, the translation. That's great. She starts translating it. But Peter Hansen gets a little upset. He goes, This is way too modern. This is way too modern. Oh, this is not appropriate for scripture. So he tried to translate it in an older style because he felt yeah. that was better for scripture. Yes, yes. And then, so you have Erastus Snow, who was just called to be an apostle yeah. in the previous year. He's in charge, and he goes, okay, you and me, we'll do it again. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll work on it. And so they spent the next seven months retranslating the Book of Mormon into Danish. Wow, interesting. Well, Erastus Snow makes a trip over to England uh, to visit the saints. Now, to give you a comparison, 18... This was 1850, but by 1851, in Utah, there are 10,000 members of the church. Wow. But in England, there are 30,000. So wow, um, the, really? the bulk of the members are over there. Wow. And that was really the hub of where everything's going. You have yeah. Franklin D. Richards, who's running things over there. Well, Erastus Snow goes over to the uh, Millennial Star Office and says, need to borrow some money yeah. so we can print the Book of Mormon. Yeah, yeah. So they got 200 pounds. And he got promises from a couple of the elders to um, kind of support it. And so they go back over. After they finish translation, they get another, um, like an editor from one of the newspapers and says, can you go through this? And he pretty much passed it off, thought they did wow, a, a pretty good cool. job. that's great. But they just didn't print it. In fact, it was Charles Dickens who kind of... Um, popularized this uh, subscription method of uh, selling oh. things part uh, a bit at a time. He yes, did his books yes. like 12 to 24 issues. Right. Well, uh, Franklin D. Richards got 200 subscribers and started giving it to him a page at a time. <laughs> Uh, just just to kind of get it going. Yeah. Have and we ever had that done with the Book of Mormon besides this? I um, You look at some of the earlier ones, and it was kind of, there. It was quirky like this. Yeah, but this is the yeah. first one. This is the first time yeah, they're doing it, and it kind amazing. of set the model for future a translation of what could be done. Yeah, yeah. Translation is a tricky thing, yeah. and one word here, one word there can really make a difference. Yes, yes. 
And that was very apparent on the title page of the Danish. Oh, really? And right here we have, first of all, that's the first edition Book of Mormon. But it's not just any Book of Mormon. This is Samuel Smith's first. Oh. So it's the first missionary. <laughs> that's amazing. It talks about unto the interpretation thereof. Okay, uh-huh. Okay, gone by the way, the Gentile, and that's in there twice. The interpretation thereof by the gift of God. And you have um, Erastus Snow and Peter Hansen. This is the first edition Book of Mormon. You see it was printed in Copenhagen, 1851. Yeah. But up here in the title page, where they ran into a little problem, if we go over here to the Danish, they have you have a kind of this little circle with a line through it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you have a U. Well... There was uh, a brother mauling, I believe. He was kind of the first one to get a copy, and he goes, we have a problem. <laughs> uh, right here, that's supposed to be a U. That changes the meaning of that word. It's supposed to be the interpretation thereof. Yes. That, that little line makes it the destruction thereof. <laughs> and yeah, so, that's a problem. That's a problem. And so it just, that was embarrassing, and... Um, and so they ordered new title pages. I mean, they oh, didn't have to do okay. the whole book. Just They'd, the title page, yeah. But there are only five known copies that have that error because oh. only a few few got out. Yeah, yeah, and, because before they fixed it. Um, but this is one of those copies. Yeah, In fact, this is great. a copy presented by Erastus Noted, fellow apostle George A. Smith. Oh, yeah. Another interesting note. We know that uh, a few years earlier, the missionaries in England had given Queen Victoria a copy of the Book of Mormon. Oh, yeah. So these elders, they want to give a copy <laughs> to the Dowager Queen Caroline. The precedent had been set of yeah, giving it to Yeah, and royalty. they printed yeah. her name on it and everything, and they yeah, went yeah. to her, and she goes, uh, yeah, I'm not going to take that, and just oh, wow. rejected it. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And so that copy's at BYU right now. Oh, really? That's a, that's a fun... <laughs> Little story, That's but amazing. the queen, she says, no, I'm not no, taking it. No, I'm not going to take it. That's amazing. So uh, a lot of interesting history. They printed 3,000 copies of the first one, yeah. um, and but only about 10 in this really nice presentation. Yeah, that is really nice. So um, 1851 is the first time it's done in a foreign language, yeah. but that got the ball rolling, and the next year they just jumped in with both feet and did German, French, Italian, and Welsh, oh, and wow. so it takes off from there. That's more what you would have expected maybe as yes. the first one. Could other people read the Danish Book of Mormon? I, if I'm in Norway or something, would, would other people in the Scandinavian area have known enough Danish to be able to read the Book of Mormon in Danish? Well, it, it's, it would be similar to the, well, like Spanish and Portuguese. Okay, and yeah, yeah. You would kind of be able to make it out. Right, but right, it, right. Mostly this was just for it's, Danish members. It's go, yes. Um, it will be 1878 before there's a Swedish okay, okay, yeah. copy and all the way till uh, 1950 until there's a Norwegian. Yeah. So as the first translation into a foreign language, how would you say this affected other translations into foreign languages. One of the things you mentioned was the serializing of it, having a little bit at a time. What are some other things where this affected the translation into other languages? Well, um, there just wasn't a formal method of funding this, and so yeah. it was almost up to the local elders to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And um, they made the arrangements, and these early copies also uh, would show who the translator was. You don't see that on any of the translations yeah, from no, the past, you, yeah. um, you know, 50 or so years. They quit doing that, but it was interesting to show who, who was the translator. Um, but it showed where the emphasis and where the uh, focus of early missionary work was being done by where these copies were done. And every single one of these foreign translations has a, a story that's interesting like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did the translation with the help? Whom? And there was typically an apostle that was kind of in charge of yeah. supervising that. So why Danish? Why was Danish the first Book of Mormon translation? Well, um, the church, uh, there were quite a few converts who spoke Danish, and they had friends and relatives back in Denmark, yeah, yeah. and uh, they kind of followed where the demand was. They wanted to best use the resources, and, 
But it's also not like they sent a lot of people. They sent two people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, three. They sent three, another early convert, but he went to Sweden. But it was two people to yeah, start okay, it. Okay, yeah. That's all there were yeah, yeah. In, in the beginning. But they had immediate success. And over the next several decades, tens of thousands of yeah. converts would come from Denmark. So that was sort of the logical thing to do. You translate the book where you have a lot of people who are going to read it. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. What is this pocket watch here? Well, this is a pocket watch, EFS, Erastus Fairbank Snow. Oh. So this would have been his pocket watch. That's great. That's and great. Uh, it's fun to have these little artifacts from history that yeah, yeah. make bring these people to life. Yeah. Um, and it's not just a name on a page anymore. This is somebody you can kind of... Yeah. see a little piece of their life. That would have been something. He would have had a vest. That would have been in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. Pull it out. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It's We often, I think, think of these people in the past and we just go, oh yeah, they lived a long time ago and it's hard to connect with them. But when you see these books, you see this really old book of them translating this and printing it. You see his pocket watch. You start to realize these are real people with real lives who did hard but important things like this translation of the Book of Mormon into yes. Danish. Yes, and this Peter Hansen who went over in 1849, he stayed for six years. For so six years? Six years. And then he came back to Utah and they called him on another mission. And he went back for a couple of years and then he came back home and they called him on a third mission. So he ended up serving uh, 10 years of wow. missions wow. Uh, over the course of three decades. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So Reed, what else do you have here today? Well, since we're talking about Denmark and Danish, yeah. uh, probably the most notable 19th century figure who was a contemporary of these missionaries was Hans Christian Andersen. Oh, really? I don't usually think of them as being contemporaries. Yes, uh, Hans Christian Andersen was born in 1805, the same year as Joseph oh, Smith. Oh, that's, that's amazing. And he was really at the peak of his career at the time these two elders, Elders Hansen and um, Arasta Snow, were over there. That's Just great. five years earlier, he had the release of The Little Mermaid, and he was doing um, quite a bit. Well, he became extremely popular, and yeah. so that, that would have been in the background of all of this. Um, this famous um, author who became internationally known for his... Yeah. Fairy tales. Yeah, that's an interesting connection of trying to think about the time period in which this is all happening. Yes. Yeah. Reed, thanks very much for letting us come here and look at all these great things that you have and for telling us about the Danish Book of Mormon. It's great being with you today. Happy to do so. Thanks very much.